natural vacuum evap test. The natural vacuum leak jet uses the same components as vacuum decay. It's used for the 20,000th leak check, and it has some advantages. It's done if the engine is shut down and does not require the four to six hour wait after the engine shut down to operate. In fact, it wants the vehicle to be driven to heat the fuel up, and we'll talk about that. The test runs after the engine shut down, which can take as much as 45 minutes to complete. It starts and waits for a number of criteria. We're going to talk about them all. And we're going to use Ford as an example. All engine natural vac systems have similar operation. But Ford Mode 6 scan data is so good for instructional purposes, we have chosen to use Ford. Natural vacuum uses the expansion of warm fuel and the contraction of fuel as it cools to create a positive, then a negative pressure. Vacuum, we call it. What we're going to do, the natural vacuum test is done to detect the 20,000th leak. The old 40,000th leak check done at cruising speed with vacuum decay method remains the same. That's why we can do a service bay test with the uh, 40,000th service bay with a scan tool. Let's talk about Ford's phase zero. Phase zero is the start. Its fuel tank pressure is allowed to stabilize for two minutes after engine shutdown with a vent valve open, de-energized. Two minutes to stabilize. Fuel has been heated by driving the vehicle, which will cause the fuel to vaporize after shutdown, generating pressure, and then to contract as it cools, creating a natural vacuum, which is where it gets its name. Now, phase one starts when the vent is closed after the stabilization period. Two minutes have transpired. We let the system stabilize, then we close the vent in phase one. The PCM monitors the fuel tank pressure sensor to watch the pressure build to see if it meets a calibrated threshold, indicating the fuel is expanded and is warm. Now, if it reaches this threshold, which is programmed into mode six, so the pressure threshold is going to be determined by the fuel level, ambient temperature, and the specifications, as I said, are going to be in mode six. We can see the last time it ran, reminding you again, mode six is not live. So if the threshold is reached, we jump to the last phase, which is phase four, to record a past test result. Phase four is either reporting a failure or a pass. In this case, we reach the threshold, we have a pass test. If the pressure reaches a plateau without reaching the magic pressure threshold, then we go to phase two. In phase two, we're going to have to run only if the threshold was not reached, and we're going to go in and open the vent to zero out the tank pressure with about a two-minute stabilization period. So we let it rise, it plateaus, we open it up for a couple of minutes, let all the pressure settleize, then we're going to close the vent back up, and the fuel tank pressure valve is, value is stored, and the monitor goes to phase three. So phase two is just a transition, like phase zero. It's a stabilization period after the vents open again. We did not complete the test in phase one, so we go to phase three. So the next we'll look at the pressure vacuum and how this all looks. Here's what we have. We started off at P0, phase zero. We stabilized. We recorded the pressure for the fuel tank pressure, set it to zero. Then we closed the vent, watched the pressure rise. Remember that first phase zero asked last about two minutes. This length of time we wait depends on how long it takes to fuel to quit expanding. Notice the pressure is going up, going up, then it stops. When it stops, it doesn't go up anymore, we open the vent and go to phase two. The green line, the positive patch threshold for pressure, is higher than the 0.5 inches of water. We needed about 0.75 inches of water. We got 0.5. So it opens it up, zeroes it back out again. Now we're going to close it up for phase three. Phase three waits for the pressure drop as we shrink the fuel. This is the one that can take quite a while to look at. You see we go out to 1,600 seconds before we pass the point here. But notice it keeps going. It easily passed this threshold. Now go to mode six. It'll tell you what the value stored for the negative pressure threshold was reached, what the numbers were. In phase four, we report a pass. Either we passed them in phase one or we passed in phase three. Or if neither one fa passes, we have a failure. So life is a little more complicated. So we reached this plateau. Said the, the expansion indicated we had a pressure rise. The fuel was warm. That's good news. 
Then we go down to two. Now, phase three only runs if the pressure threshold was not reached in phase one, and we had to go through phase two. Phase two re-zeroed it. Then the vents closed. We let the system go back through it again, wait for it to expand. Then we let it collapse again in phase three. So phase three is a series of things. It'll wait for a maximum of 45 minutes after leaving phase two. Now, there's a number of things you need to know. If phase four reaches the vacuum threshold, the monitor goes to four, and we're done. Phase three only runs if the heat to fuel was too low, not enough driving to pass in phase one, and we had to go through phase two. Phase three averages four failed attempts to create a vacuum before recording a failure and go to phase four for a recording failure. It averages four. It takes a two-trip code, so it can take eight failures to turn on the check engine lamp. If the failure only shows up in test three, it can take up to eight different times before it's going to fail. It's very difficult to judge this. The reason is phase one was waiting for a pressure rise. If we've got plenty of warm fuel, we pass in phase one. We don't go to phase two. We skip right to phase four. We don't do that in phase three. We had a weak pressure rise. Therefore, we may have a small vacuum decrease. And we've got to make sure the fuel is warm enough. So when we finally get here after 45 minutes, this will be a pass and we're done. We don't have any average. If we never get to the negative pass threshold, then we'll have to set a code. All right, let's go through our test results in Mode 6. Mode 6 monitor test I3C is data for the 20,000th leak test, key on engine off. Under that, we have, and you notice they all say they're natural vacuum. Under that, we have test ID 81, 82, and 83. 81 is the test results for the pressure test with its thresholds. 82 is for the vacuum test we talked about with those thresholds. And then 83 is the averaging filter for those four consecutive tries to pass the test if we fail, record one failure. Remember, we have to do this twice in order to record two failures to turn the check engine light on. Look at the information available to us in Mode 6. We couldn't get this any other way. Just remember again, it's not live data. It's only going to be there for the last time the test ran. When we finally get to the final phase of Ford, it is phase four stores the test results in mode six to manage the check engine light and to turn on the check engine codes and all the other stuff. Now, all the other systems that use natural vacuum leak detection using the same components as the 40,000th vacuum decay will work very similar to this. Their numbers might change slightly, but guess what? Their numbers for the max and the mins and the test results are going to be stored in mode 6. It just won't always be as pretty as this. We'll go look at a couple other mode 6 pieces of information to see how they look for GM and Honda.